Hello. Welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot for April 15th. So um, <clears throat> this week, I, there's sort of several readings that I want to do that, that just look at people circling around Trump and what's going on with them. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of attention being paid to this virus, rightly, rightly so. Um, but you know what? That means that their focus and the attention is off of a whole lot of other people. And so today... I want to take a look at, <clears throat> I think we're going to look at Mitch McConnell, um, Bill Barr, and Mike Pompeo. So, I think we'll start with good old Mitch. He's getting a little bit of bad press lately about how he really has become sort of Trump's chief enabler. And that that seems to be creating a little bit of tension actually right within the party itself. So um, come on down because I have a question. I want to take a look at Mitch and see what's going on. Come on. Okay, here we go. So we'll do one more quick shuffle for Mitch. Maybe two. And here we go. So... Current Mitch McConnell, current Mitch McConnell, current Mitch McConnell. Back a little bit. Okay. And as most of you know, the Knight of, or sorry, the King of Pentacles is one of my cards for Trump, um, along with the Fool card. So. You know, it's interesting that first card out, Mitch is getting, is the card that represents Trump. So that's telling us a lot right there. Oh, oh my Lord. And look, this is the other card that represents Trump for me. So you have the King of Pentacles and the Fool showing up front and center when the question is about Mitch. Fascinating. Okay, so this is the thing about Mitch McConnell. It was as if, you know, we often talk about how um, Trump is the perfect puppet. But in many, many ways, McConnell was one of those people who, when he saw how the cards were falling way back, um, and it looked like, you know, this guy was, he got the nomination, and even though it didn't look like he was going to win, you know, there was definitely a chance. Right almost from the get-go, Mitch McConnell decided that he was going to throw in everything behind Trump because he 100% believed that Trump was a perfect puppet for him. So he thought that he could just get all kinds of stuff done that had to do with the Republican agenda. And as long as, you know, Trump's ego was stoked enough that, you know, he would pretty much get away with it. And the thing is, to a large degree, he really has been successful. But what even he did not understand was the degree to which Trump simply needs and requires complete adulation. Um, the fact that Trump needs to always be in the spotlight. And not that this actually um, particularly bothered old Mitch, because Mitch is more like that snake in the grass, right? I mean, he's the one who wants to slither around quietly behind the scenes and get stuff done while everybody else is sort of playing for the cameras. So the fact that Trump kind of wanted to be out front and center was really no skin off of Mitch's nose, except for the fact that very quickly he figured out that, you know what, you cannot confront this guy at all. You can't talk to this guy. He doesn't want to listen to reason or fact. He is absolutely out of control. 
that was a hard lesson for for um, Mitch to sort of swallow because he had failed to basically clearly read the situation or the dynamic with Trump. Um, and so that put him in a position where if you think back to those early days um, where, you know, McConnell would try to push it in one direction. And if for whatever reason, um, Trump didn't like that direction. He would just pull out the rug under anybody. He didn't care. And, you know, part of it, again, is that Mitch likes to think that he is like um, the advisor in chief. When, in fact, um, you know, it is Sean Hannity. It is, um, I don't know, his buddies at Mar-a-Lago. He, he takes advice from the people who he considers his closest friends. And Mitch did not ever, frankly, fall into that category. But as much as, as much as Mitch perceived Trump as the perfect puppet, Trump perceived Mitch as the perfect tool. There you have it. Right. They both thought that they were going, they both are playing it because there's something that they get personally from the relationship and the dynamics between the relationships. So what has happened is that whole celebratory mood. Look what we've accomplished. Look what we've done. Look at all the judges. Oh, my God, the judges are so brilliant. That has given away to oh my God, we're going to lose the majority. We're going to lose the White House. Um, this guy is out of control. It doesn't matter what he's, you know, who he throws under the bus. He's going to say whatever he needs to say for his own personal um, reasons, satisfaction, you know, whatever you want to call it. So there's kind of that sense that the party itself is actually starting to recognize that there is so much on the table at this point, and the situation with this virus is making it about a nine million times worse <laughs> because they can't get this buddy, they, you know, they can't get him under control, right? He's just going to keep doing what he's going to do. And in some ways, and this is what's kind of crazy about the dynamic <clears throat> excuse me, is that because Trump is so in the moment, right? It's all about surviving the moment he's in. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, preparing for what's coming ahead. And so because of that, Trump really isn't focused in some ways on the kind of damage that he's doing for his reelection and by extension, the GOP reelections. Because he's only cares about satisfying himself in that moment, right? Right now, he, he needs to be superior and profound and strong and, and confident in the moment. And he doesn't care if he's corrected in 30 seconds because to his mind, he survive the moment, okay? And so they are starting for the first time to really, really get clarity and really, really understand that that is what is going on. And the party, other members of his party, are looking to him and saying, you got to get this guy under control. For God's sakes, would you please start leading? I mean, get some of these Republicans who are not on board with, you know, um, sort of a stay at home measures when the, with the measures to try to con contain this virus, um, start pulling your weight, start doing something, you know, reach out and get these people on board because this prevailing attitude is going to kill us as a party, kill us as a people. Um, and, you know, he's sort of, he's, he's kind of like, well, you know, but Trump gets really cranky and then he doesn't like listen to me at all. And, oh, you know, I really don't want to go out in public and sort of try to send out a different message because, you know, he doesn't like it. And so, you know, maybe there's a little bit of stuff going on behind the scenes um, where, where Mitch is trying to um, 
you know, rein in some members, kind of get some stuff under control. But for the most part, he realizes that this is, you know, it's not only a, a, a ship that is sinking, it's a flaming, burning ship that is sinking. And he finally understands, if you will, the dangers the prison he, he created for himself because he was not able to read that situation and he was not able to keep a balance. They totally capitulated to whatever Trump wanted. Because of that, his energy is dramatically diminished. And he's now facing the actual consequences of encouraging a man who is a barking moron to have free reign. And so that's the price he's going to pay. And that's the price this party is going to pay. Well, looks like old Mitch is in for a bit of a rough ride. And as I said before, and I have, again, no reason to think that I'm not accurate. Um, Mitch is not, it does not look to me like Mitch is going to be able to hang on to his uh, not only is he going to be able to hang on to the Senate majority, I also don't believe that he is going to be able to hang on to um, his seat. So, and and I, I, for Kentucky, for the people of Kentucky um, that I've gotten to know through the comment section, etc., for your sake, I really, really hope he doesn't hang on to that seat. Okay, let's move on to Mike Pompeo. The situation with Mike kind of has me a little bit intrigued because, you know, he's been awful quiet lately. Awful quiet. And, you know, strikes me that that then would be the perfect time for him to start trying to clean up some of the mess um, that was made because of Russia, the Russian investigation, the impeachment. Um, it sounds like while the attention, or it feels very much like the attention, when the attention is not on him, he's able to sort of do a lot of what you call sweeping under the rug. Um, so I want to see if the cards actually agree with the feelings I'm getting. Um, and I also want to see what else might be going on with good old um, Secretary of State Pompeo. Current Mike Pompeo, current Mike Pompeo, current Mike Pompeo. Yeah, you betcha. That's exactly what he's trying to do. So he is using this time where the spotlight is not on him. It's not on Russia. It's not on the impeachment or investigations to sort of try to clean up the mess at the State Department. And there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to clean up. Now, typically this card um, tends to talk about usually a woman of affluence who has a lot of assets. Um, in some decks, it is, you know, a card of abundance, etc. But what I'm focusing on right now is the hand and the bird, because you will see that there is a glove protecting the hand from the bird. The bird is Trump. If this represents Pompeo and this represents the stuff he's trying to hide, the glove means that he has finally kicked into gear and has decided he needs to start protecting literally himself and the State Department from Trump because otherwise his political fortunes are going to be permanently and severely damaged. And so while it is quiet and while, you know, there's other stuff going on that's really, really, um, you know, keeping people's attention, he appears to be very, very busy just doing what he can do to um, 
it really is sweep stuff under the rug. I'm not getting a lot of actually destroying as much as I am getting, let's hide this and make this, let's make this, you know, I don't know, classified and, and let's make sure that, you know, this kind of gets hidden in a way that it's going to be impossible to find, um, that kind of thing. And because he, he is all about his own political future. He wants to be president. Um, and I don't know how to break it to him, but I kind of don't see that happening. I kind of don't because his association with Trump is going to not reflect well on him for literally um, many, many, many years to come. Um, it's not going to be forgiven quickly. And frankly, um, the election of someone like Pompeo, who was closely connected to the Trump administration, literally would, I, I it, it, you know, be the straw that kind of broke breaks your allies back, because one one idiot in office, one um, somebody that two faced somebody that corrupt, they can excuse as an anomaly for one four-year period. But if somebody associated with the Trump presidency ends up in any significant position of power in the next many, many years, um, that's going to create an incredible instability. Now, make no mistake, there is some real infighting and squabbling going on behind the scenes. There are people who honestly are paying attention to what he's doing and kind of in their own way, they're keeping track of it. They're keeping track of where stuff got placed and where it got moved to, etc. Because they really feel and believe that there will come a time where they're going to be able to safely come forward and help the next administration set things to right, okay? And so there's a lot, he's doing a lot behind the scenes, but what he doesn't understand is that there's people watching him behind the scenes and they're like, yeah, you know what? This thing's going to fly, buddy. Um, you can do that right now, but um, we're watching you and we know where you're stashing some of this stuff and what you're doing to it. It's really interesting because it feels as if even people who should know better, um, even people that I would term a political animal, you know, they know the ropes, they know the ins and outs. Um, even they have sort of fallen victim to this real short-sightedness, this real idea that they can just bluff and bully their way through and it's going to just be fine somehow magically in the end and they don't understand that it's not going to be because as the events of the next several months continue to roll out the dysfunction and the incompetence um and in some ways it, it really feels like and the criminal neglect Okay, of the way this government has been functioning is going to continue to come front and center and people are not going to be so easy to forgive. And given the fact that even though in this particular crisis, the Secretary of State really doesn't have um, a role that is sort of front and center, right? He's not somebody, of course, nobody even knows why the hell Bill Barr's sh showing up at those press conferences either. But again, behind the scenes, um, you've got some real um, sneaky stuff going on. But like I said, you know, people are watching him. He's, he's picking and choosing. Um, he's not paying attention to the fact that um, his ranks are not in agreement with him and are not really supporting him. He he's of that arrogant opinion of like, well, if you don't want to play by ball, play ball my way, you can just move along. And he's not understanding the impact and the ramifications of all of this. You can just move along. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, um, it looks as if his position in the government is going to become very, very precarious. Um, 
And again, you know, I don't know is, um, I can't tell at this point if he's going to leave before the um, administration does. But either way, it really feels as if his days in the White House um, are limited. And it does not feel to me like he's going to be having any sorts of significant position in the White House um, for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. Um, you know, and he's going to be that person who... Um, you know, broadcasters, only Fox is going to want to talk to him after the fact because, again, it can't be trusted what he says, does, thinks, um, you know. And I, I mean, the upside of, of this, or one of the upsides of this really horrible situation feels like, by time a lot of this is said and done, the... American people are going to be very quick to react in a negative way when they feel that they are being lied to or spun. Um, it really feels like there's going to be an energy of, you need to tell us what's going on, you need to give us the straight goods, or you know, you're going to pay a price for that. So, and and people who were in cahoots with Trump and people who tried to cover up for him, et cetera, et cetera, they're the ones who are really going to, um, in some ways, really be ostracized. And only in the tightest of tight um, Republican circles are they going to find any support. Okay. Let's take a look at William Barr. Current Bill Barr, current Bill Barr, current Bill Barr. Yep, there he is, head of the Justice Department, not doing a very good job. He believes, believes, okay, this isn't sort of a philosophy, this is a true gut belief that he is untouchable and by extension, the president is untouchable. This is not something that, um, this has been sort of a lifelong belief, right? That the president should have all of these really broad powers and whatever he wants to do is just fine. And he further believes that it is the attorney general's job, frankly, to allow or to protect the president so that um, the presidency is kept safe and secure. OK, so um, that's just a belief structure that he comes from. And the problem is, is that he hasn't quite figured out that it's not going to work. OK, there are inklings of, um, you know, him looking around and going, wow. Uh, but, it, it, you know, his wow is not about how insane things are. It's not wow because he is serving a president with no moral compass. It's not, wow, because this is a president who believes that Bill Barr is his private Raycon. It's wow, because it's like, wow, you know, he, he's really making a lot of work for us. You know, he's making things a little bit more difficult than I would really like. And he keeps drawing attention to where we really don't want attention drawn. But it's just, it's, 
It's just what he thinks is right. And, you know, from the very first reading I did about Bill Barr, I said that this is a man who, who gives the impression or the illusion of listening intently to what other people say. Looking as if he is taking in, you know, their advice, their thoughts, their suggestions, and then literally blindly going ahead and doing exactly what he was going to do anyways, because he really feels that he knows best and he has the best answers. And, you know, we have seen that with him in some of the hearings, um, in, in his behavior, right? It's like, he will specifically say and do things to stir the pot. Um, and that is not, I'm sorry, it's just not going to end well for him. It, it's really, really not. Um, his own ego, his own greed, his own position and standing really, really are going to bring down the fall of Bill Barr. And when he falls, it's going to be a little bit painful because Trump isn't going to be there to support him or shield him. And more, um, the Republicans are also going to want to keep a little bit of distance from him because the level of... Um, um, corruption is, is going to be so significant and so blatant that even they are going to have to figure out a way to sort of dance back from the rain. Um, and a really interesting thought, I know that a lot of people, including myself, think that Harris um, would make a fabulous attorney general. And I don't disagree, but I have to tell you, I wonder if it's not possible that the person who might be tapped to be the new attorney general is Sally Yates. Interesting thought, right? I mean, she was the one who went flying over to the White House and sort of blew the whistle on Mike Flynn. Um, and then she was like fired. And then she sort of has become everybody's hero frankly. Um, but she's been very quiet, very behind the scenes. And I'm really wondering if because she was um, sort of an assistant attorney general, and I'm not even sure for how long she had that position, but it was a bit of time, um, that they, they're, the thinking is, is that she might be a really good person, again, to hit the job running, right? And that's going to be a big part of what goes into the decisions that are made about about um, try to correcting the government, trying to get things rebalanced and restructured and moving forward in a way and really, really cleaning up the big mess that has been left everywhere, is there really is that sense of if you have previous experience um, and the learning curve for you is going to be less intense, um, you really are being looked upon favorably for different areas. So uh, just a thought, but, you know, Nancy Yates is starting to me to look like a very, very viable option for replacing Bill Barr and for starting to clear up the disaster that has become um, the Justice Department. And he's another one, you know, um, his willingness to do Trump's bidding is not going to serve him well going forward. It's really, really not. And, you know, there are times when I do his cards where I really feel health issues and health concerns. Um, I'm not saying they're there. I'm not saying they're not there. I'm saying they don't seem to be showing up in this particular reading. And maybe possibly the reason for that is because I'm really not focused on, um, yeah, 
Okay, so if we needed to summarize Bill Barr, his position, his standing, and frankly, his immediate future, here are your cards. The Tower, the Devil, and Death. So, looking a little, perhaps, um, unstable for him. Okay, so there we have it. That's a quick look at Mitch, Bill, and Mike. So until next time, take care. Be well. I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.